Hey there YouTube, this is Mr. Lubufu, and welcome back to another episode of MTG Mastery. This time we're going to be covering how to draft Urza's Saga block. Again, we're covering the full block, not triple of any set. Anyway, let's go ahead and cover some general notes for to, to begin with. Um, black is very strong. Um, so in the early packs, if you're able to cut black fairly well, you're able to get rewarded later on. In addition, green is considered the strongest color overall. So if you're able to end up in black green, you're probably in pretty good shape. Anyway, let's go ahead and cover the mechanics of Urza Saga. There are two big mechanics, both echo and cycling. So echo, what it allows is... If you cast a creature, typically creature, with Echo, during the next turn's upkeep, you are required to pay an Echo cost, i.e. some additional mana. This allows you, if you choose not to, the creature is sacrificed. If you do, you get to stick it around. This allows for some more powerful effects at lower CMCs, but then requires some later investment. There is also Cycling, which is an alternate cost you can pay to draw a card, and for some spells it allows you to cycle and gain some sort of additional effect talking about some or the the relative strength of the colors in urza's saga the top color is black followed by green then red then blue then white in urza's legacy it is green then black then red then white then blue and in Urza's Destiny, it is green, then black, then blue, then red, and then white. So as you notice, green and black, top two colors for each set. White, near the bottom. So typically, you don't want to be in white if you can choose to do so. Anyway, some of the top archetypes. Uh, black X Removal, i.e. you get all of the best black cards, and you can just pair it with whichever color you want. Um, black is that powerful. Uh, black green, of course, being the strongest. Another archetype that some people rather enjoyed was green red fatties. You use some of the top green cards and back it up with some of the red removal, and you have this solid arc or this solid deck. Anyway, let's cover the top cards for drafting in Urza Saga, the top commons for each color. It's a little bit hard for this one. In white, we have Sanctum Custodian slash Pacifism. They're both very strong. In blue, we have Pendril Drake. Black is bonkers because it has Pestilence at common. And oh my god, is Pestilence good. Red gives us a bit of a tie between Arc Lightning and Heat Ray. I personally am a huge fan of Arc Lightning more so than Heat Ray, but that's just me. And green, the top common is Symbiosis. At uncommons that worth noting, all of the embraces, whether they be Gaia's embrace, Sarah's embrace, Vampiric embrace, Zephyd's embrace, and Shiv's embrace are all kind of really good. Yes, there's plenty of removal to kill them, but the effects are often often so powerful. Confiscate is another very powerful uncommon, and Diabolic Servitude rounds out the, some of the better uncommons in Urza's saga. As for bomb rares, Abyssal Horror, Crater Hellion, and Morphling, which Morphling was a constructed powerhouse due to the way damage stacked at the time. Let's move on to Urza's Legacy, where the top common in white is Cessation, blue is Frantic Search, black, solid removal in SWAT, red is Gitu Slingers, and green, and I might be a little bit biased on this one, is Rancor, because, oh my god, do I love Rancor, it just smashes all the things. Um, <clears throat> for uncommons, we have Mother of Runes and Bone Shredder as two of the top uncommons, and some bomb rares are Deranged Hermit and Ring of Gix. Now we finish it up in Urza's Destiny, where the top common is Caption Knight. In blue, we have Bubbling Beebles, which is not that good. Black gives us Scent of Nightshade, red gives us Scent of Cinder, and green gives us Yabamaya Elder. Now I'm going to give a bit of a caveat. Both Scent of Nightshade and Scent of Cinder are far stronger in Triple Urza's Destiny. We're able to go a little bit more monocolored and take multiple Scent of Cinders or Scent of Nightshades. So that is something to keep in mind. There are some other cards that are playable, but these are just the ones that 
stood out to me. Now, some uncommons include archery training. With okay, let's, uh, let's just I'm not gonna I'm not gonna underestimate this. Archery training is absolutely bonkers. Holy cow, this card is so good in limited. Um, I've been so impressed with it every time, and it's just insane. Thieving magpie, very powerful uncommon. Draw engine and has evasion. Nightshade seer. Strong Uncommon, and Yabamaya Enchantress as well. Some bomb rares include Treachery and Attrition, and oh my god, Mastercore! Um, Mastercore, very powerful. Uh, not only is it colorless, so it goes into any deck, it is like if you ever get to untap with Mastercore, you just crush face with it. And that's basically it for how to draft this set. Now, as a special bonus episode to be appearing later this week, uh, for a brief period of time, Urza's Saga block draft was available on Magic Online. And because I miscued while doing some cube drafts, I won a full set of Urza's Saga block packs. So, I just happened to have the set, and I decided to record, given it was at like 3am, um, a full Urza's block draft, so you can see the sort of reasoning I go through as I both play and draft the set. So that should be coming up later this week as a special bonus episode of MTG Mastery. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode, and I will see you guys next time. Thank you all for watching this episode of MTG Mastery. If you guys are interested in any of the other videos in this series, whether it be lore, draft strategies, pack analysis, or the pack openings themselves, go ahead and click on the annotations now to be taken to playlists with the full list of all uploaded content of that type. Thank you guys all for watching. Rate, comment, and subscribe.